Good morning, and welcome to the online worship service of the Salvation Army Lindsay Community Church. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Whether you gave birth or stepmoms or aunts or neighbors or friends, we celebrate all of you this day for the love, the care, the selflessness, and wisdom that you share with your children, our children, all children. My mom passed away 10 years ago and my mother-in-law 13 years ago. And if your mom is still with us, please spoil her today and during all the rest of the year, make sure your mom knows that you love her. Talk to her regularly. Once your mom is gone, it will be a little too late for that. So blessings upon all of you mothers today and every day. We're so glad that you're joining with us and our hope is that you feel the presence of the Lord as we worship together, even though we cannot be together face to face. Remembering those in prayer again that are on our health prayer list, Shannon Switzer, Major Linda Balmer, Ruth Barber, and Jane Sheward. And always keep in mind that Morley Danes and Lucy Pelly are in long-term care homes in Lindsay, so keep them in your prayers as well. The 2021 Partners in Mission campaign ends at the end of May. In normal circumstances, when we would worship together at the church, we would have an in-gathering of monies on the last weekend of May. Of course, we cannot do that right now. So if you have been putting money aside for Partners in Mission, please deliver that to the church when you can before the end of May. There are three more weeks before the end of May, and we are $1,003 away from our target of $9,000. Thank you for all of your generous giving, and may the Lord truly bless you. There will be a short video after the call to worship. The food bank could really use some donations. Donations can be dropped off Tuesdays and Thursdays at Peel Street at the loading dock at the back. Please ring the buzzer for assistance. So when uh, you're out shopping, uh, keep uh, these things in mind. And then on your way home, you could drop them off at uh, Peel Street. Current needs in particular are canned stews, granola bars, cookies, men's deodorant, body wash, and shampoo. But you can bring other things as well. They won't send you away. I can guarantee you that. Call to worship this morning. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And Jesus said, come. To all mothers and all children, he said, come. To the motherless and the childless, he said, come. To all who long to be mothered, he said, come. Come unto me, all ye, ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My name is Tatenda Makarau. I'm the farm manager for Ndola Farm, and I've been working here for three years, from since uh, January 2017 up to today. This farm uh, was bought in 1983, and the total acreage is 89 hectares. Uh, our main projects we have got piggery, and we have got uh, poultry, which uh, under poultry of layers and broilers, and a bit of uh, village chickens. Uh, vegetables, okra, uh, cabbages. The main purpose of this farm is to support the Salvation Army in Zambia financially. Agriculture is very important in Zambia because a lot of people, they depend on agriculture. So it's helping the, the, the nation to be able to feed ourselves, not waiting for donors. In Zambia, the employment uh, percentage is very, very low. We are, we are creating employment for the unskilled people and we teach them uh, how to farm, the, 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 the skills in farming, uh, so that they can also empower themselves. They are now trying to do their own projects because on what they are learning from, from this farm. My name is Awin Tangandu. Yes, uh, I am a farmer. 
uh, I work for Salvation Army Farm, Ndola Farm. I'm a general worker in short, in general, and uh, I do assist the manager in some other works like farming, uh, gardening, and the uh, other works that are found here, like piggery and in the chicken lands. The Ndola farm has helped a lot uh, me with my family, uh, with financially, and uh, with the other knowledge that I need to read my family, they've helped us. I really love to work on this farm very much because they are good people, they assist, they teach, yeah, they are not harsh, they are humble. People sometimes they come here with different attitudes, but when they are here we are teaching them the Christian values. We are not just farming, we are not just here to farm, but also to spread the word of God around the community.
so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look, an empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed, you're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! Ah! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. Does somebody want to come use the bathroom while I'm in here? Just before the pastoral prayer, I get the opportunity to say thank you to my mother, um, who I am so grateful for and I love so dearly. And I thank her for leading me in my faith along with dad. And uh, this special day, mom, I love you. Let's pray together. Father, on this day, when we acknowledge the importance of motherhood among us, we first give thanks that you are a loving parent to us all. You have formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together under your wing. We celebrate your divine love reflected in human expressions of motherhood. We give you thanks for the mothers around us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, and persistence in the promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. May they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. We thank you for all motherly figures, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, healthcare providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. Grant them vigor to carry on their work and the satisfaction that the holy privilege of their task affords. We acknowledge to you, O oh God, that even amid our grateful celebration, many of us come with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive biological children. Draw your tender spirit near their feelings of self-betrayal, impotence, and grief, and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages, those fatigued by fertility treatments, and those struggling through the process of adoption. May they remember that in your power, and through your church, they can still leave a lasting legacy beyond themselves. For some, this day is marked by loneliness and grief, as they spend this Mother's Day as a widower, an orphan, or a parent who has lost a child. To those who today live in the wake of death, the death of a loved one, grant glimpses of the resurrection. Bring to them a steady restoration of their broken hearts. Allow them to live into their future with hope and empower them to carry out the legacy of lessons instilled within them. For some, 
This is a day that surfaces ongoing tensions that exist within our personal relationships and family dynamics. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. We give you thanks for the wide spectrum of motherhood represented among us today, new mothers and young mothers whose children are in their most tender years, mothers of grown children who transition into empty nests and a new chapter of self-discovery, mothers and grandmothers of advanced years whose twilight of life is marked by frailty of body but a potency of spirit. Theirs is a cumulative reminder that though our lives are marked by transition and by change, your nurture and affection for all your children remains the same. Therefore, remind us to live with a childlike faith, curious to every wondrous mystery, attentive to your every instruction, obedient to your every command, and willing to share with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, who is a loving mother and father to us all, and in whose name we pray. Amen and amen. Scripture reading today is found in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, the genealogy of Jesus, a record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Aram. Aram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David the king. David was the father, father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. May God add his blessing to the reading of the scripture today. Well, good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Celebrate Women's Day. I hope today, women, you feel valued and loved and that, um, yeah, that you just feel God's special presence with you today. He made you. He created you to be a woman. So isn't that worth celebrating in and of itself? I'd like to first uh, do a shout out to my mother-in-law. Hi, Ruth. Happy Mother's Day. And a shout out to my daughter who's expecting our first grandchild. And uh, so this is almost her first Mother's Day. I guess technically it's her first Mother's Day. But next week, next year, God willing, with all of this being over, God willing, we'll get to snuggle that little baby and... All will be right with the world again, won't it? But let's get right into the message today because you know me, I could go on for a little bit. So today we're celebrating mothers and the message is entitled Women of Hope. Now, Matthew 1 verses 1 to 6 might not have seemed like a real smart uh, scripture reference for today, you know, because we know usually Mother's Day, a lot of people land on Proverbs 31 woman. You know that righteous woman? Well, she's a tad bit intimidating to me. And uh, one day, someday in the next 20 years while we're here, um, maybe we'll do a series on the Proverb 31 woman. But today, we're going to concentrate on the four women that we find in Matthew uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. O.S. Hawkins, a longtime pastor in the Baptist Southern Convention, sends, says of this Proverbs 31 woman, because we do need to chat about her, because eventually it'll make sense. This Wonder Woman gets up before dawn and stays busy until the early hours of the next morning. We've developed a mental image of her. She has the looks of a movie star, the domestic brilliance and abilities of a master chef, the stamina of a world-class athlete, the intellect of a professor with a PhD, the tenacity of a political operative, the wisdom of a godly missionary, the sensitivity of Mother Teresa, the business sense of a Fortune 500 executive, the grace of an etiquette expert, and the spirituality of the Virgin Mary. Now, no wonder so many of us feel defeated on Mother's Day. My goodness. But we're going to concentrate on that later. But you'll see that the people in our story might just not measure up to the Proverbs woman either. So 
there's hope for us. And I don't know about you, but I will never be the Proverbs 31 woman. Well, maybe sometimes, some aspects. Um, a lot of times I feel defeated before I get out of bed. What hope can I possibly have? Well, some questions like, could God even use me? Come up in my mind. And then, don't disregard this message because I'm sure at times you've felt a little bit defeated too. We all have. Let's face it, there have been circumstances and times in our lives when we all have asked that question and feel hopeless. Can God use me? Is there any hope for me with all my sin, sometimes my lack of faith, my flaws, my pain, even my past? Can God still really use me? Well, let's look at Matthew 1. And I think we're going to find our answer there today. Now, what did you notice when Bob read the text? I only had him read the first six verses because after that, no other woman is mentioned until Mary in verse 16. In these first six verses, we find the names of four women, all mothers. There was Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Uriah's wife, who we know is Bathsheba. Seeing these women in the genealogical line of Jesus was quite unusual for the day. As you may know, in first in the first century, women had no rights. They couldn't earn a living. They didn't have property. So they would not have been recorded in someone's family record, let alone the earthly family of Jesus. But Matthew, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote down his record, choosing to name those women for all of history to see. He included not one, but four women. And this is where I believe we are going to find our hope this morning. So what do we do about these four women? Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. Well, let's talk about them a little bit. Now, Tamar, her story we read in Genesis 38. And let me tell you, it is a wild story. It is full of, well, almost everything. It beats out any Dallas or Knott's Landing soap opera storyline you can think of. And her story would even make the cast of Desperate Housewives and the Kardashians blush. But don't worry, today I'm going to tame it down. We're going to do the G-rated version. And here's kind of a quick uh, synopsis of the story. Tamar was a Canaanite. She was married to Ur, who was the firstborn son of Judah. Now Judah was the firstborn son of uh, Jacob, uh, was the son of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. You get the picture. Ur died and left Tamar with no children. As was the custom then, Tamar was given in marriage to Judah's second son, Onan. But then Onan died without Tamar bearing a child or son. But Judah was hesitant to give him, her, the third son in marriage. And I can't blame him, can you? I mean, at this point, he probably thought Tamar was bad luck and he didn't want another son to die. So he breaks with the custom and no marriage happens. These were desperate times for Tamar. If she didn't bear a son, how was she going to survive? So Tamar, like so many of us do when things don't seem to be going our way or the way we think they should, she took matters into her own hands. And when Judah, her father-in-law's wife, her mother-in-law dies. Tamar dresses like a prostitute and propositions her father-in-law Judah. He takes her up on the offer. She conceives and bears a son. Quite the story, huh? Well, if there was one word that could describe Tamar's situation or story, I would say desperate would be that word. If you think about it, it's often out of our desperation that we make some of the most awful, crazy, terrible decisions in our lives, isn't it? Well, keep Tamar in the back of your, your mind. We're going to move on to Rahab. Now, Rahab was the second woman in Matthew's record. We find her story in Joshua 2. Now, you may have heard of Rahab. Uh, now, if Tamar was a one-time prostitute, Rahab was a full-time prostitute. Often in scripture, when we see someone named, we often see their occupation um, and who their father was along with that name. Matthew, the tax collector, John, the Baptist, Simon, the zealot. And Rahab is simply known as Rahab, the prostitute. 
Now, many commentators believe that by the time the spies arrive at Rahab's home, which we read about in Joshua chapter 2, she's still known as a prostitute. But she's given up that trade, and now she's a businesswoman processing and dealing in flax. Perhaps she's even a dressmaker. We're not told, but she is a legally independent woman with her own house, and the nature of her business means the presence of strangers isn't questioned. And it is here at her house that the spies come before they head into the land of Cana. Um, As a result of this encounter with Rahab, her family is saved from destruction. Now, for some of us, the record of our pasts keep raising their ugly heads. And no matter what we do, how much we repent, how much restoration and healing takes place, that sometimes keeps just haunting us, doesn't it? And people are often keen to remind us of what we used to be like. Well, Rahab was no exception to this. Did she have children? Well, yeah, she did. And we find out in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, that Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. So Boaz was Rahab's son. And she went on to marry our next woman named Ruth. Now, here is a woman who is probably the most familiar of the three so far. There's a book in the Bible named after her. There's a Salvation Army musical uh, by Bob and, or sorry, Robert and Gwyneth Redhead. Um, Back in the 80s, they did this musical highlighting Ruth. Um, And she happens to be one of my favorite characters in scripture. So probably you'll hear me refer to her sometime over the next 20 years or often anyway. Um, Ruth is from Moab and that's a big part of her story. And part of her story is quite tragic as well. We read in the book of Ruth that there's a famine in the land and her husband dies. Her brother-in-law dies and her father-in-law dies. And her mother-in-law decides, Naomi, decides that she's going to go back to Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem is known as the house of bread, but there was a famine there too, because that's why Naomi and her family left Bethlehem to go to Moab because of this famine. Well, now they're experiencing it again. But she decides to go back to her hometown of Bethlehem. Ruth decides she's going to go back with Naomi. And we read of the great declaration of Ruth's faith in God of Israel and the love she has for her mother-in-law, Naomi. In chapter 1, verse 16, she says, uh, Ruth replies to Naomi, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Now, this tragedy of death allows us to see Ruth's devotion to her mother-in-law. But don't miss the fact that Ruth is a Moabite. She is not from Israel. Now, the Moabites were a people that the Israelites were not supposed to mix with. These were a people that were idolaters. They were pagans and so ungodly. And if ever there was a people from the wrong side of the tracks, it was the Moabite people. Maybe like the Moabites, some of us have a hard time shaking off our roots and where we've come from. We've arrived at the last woman that we're going to be looking at this morning and by far probably the most well-known of the four women. Bathsheba. She's known for her sin with King David, but really it's the story of King David's sin, isn't it? The story takes on, um, there's different takes on this story. One was Bathsheba was seduced by King David, or that she seduced King David, rather. And then the, the other account is, well, King David forced himself on to Bathsheba. But no matter which camp you lie in this morning, the fact is a woman was caught up in a situation where power played a part and part of that journey included shame, destruction, and death. But it didn't end there, did it? Matthew, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes the genealogical record of Jesus. And in the text, we read of four women, all outsiders, with three of the four having quite the reputation. But we can learn from them. And what do we learn from them? Well, I propose this morning we learn hope. Hope. I'm sure we could all insert ourselves in some way into the message today. Looking at these women, I think there just might be hope for you. 
there might be hope for me. Well, actually, you know, I know there is. There's hope for us all. The big idea of this message this morning, or the point that I want you to take away, is this. There is hope for me. There is hope for you. And there is hope for our families. There's hope for our families. I trust that you hear the spirit of the message today. There are three spiritual truths that I want you to hear and think about from the reading in Matthew 1 today. Women, men, kids, it's for all of us today. Here's my encouragement for you and for me. That with the help of the Holy Spirit, I know that we can live in victory over this stuff too. So let's get let's get to there, okay? One, I want you to stop comparing yourselves with others. Stop comparing yourselves to others. Now we can look at Tamar and Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba. We read of their past, about their frailties, about their flaws. They weren't perfect women. No one is. So why do we continue to compare ourselves to others? Why? Here's the problem with comparing yourself to others. When you think you're better off than someone, this results in pride. When you think and compare yourself as not as good as another person, the outcome is jealousy and envy. However we find ourselves comparing, comparison leads to sin. So please, wherever you are right now, and if you're thinking you'll never measure up, you'll never have the perfect kids, or you're thinking of someone else and thinking they probably woke up looking perfect this morning, you know who you are, got up, did the ironing, made some bread, made your own Mother's Day breakfast for crying out loud. Stop. Just stop right there. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you for who you are, not for who you are in comparison to another person. He loves you. The second truth I want to offer today is this. Stop allowing your past to control your future. So first we're going to stop comparing ourselves to others with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to stop allowing your past to control your future. I know personally, this is a tough one for me. We don't want to let our pasts paralyze us, do we? We need to confess our sin, claim God's forgiveness and righteousness, just like we read in 1 John verse 1 to 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We need to live like we really believe that and live in the freedom of Jesus Christ and his salvation. And in the Christian recovery program called Celebrate Recovery, some of you may have heard of it, they have a saying. It says, all of us have our hurts and our habits and our hang-ups in life. Don't let Satan use these hurts, these habits, and these hang-ups against us. Just to give proof of God's grace, we look at the earthly lineage of Jesus and see in the lives of those mentioned the one who died, the one who provided us the grace so that we could be saved. Jesus was born into this world by a long lineup of folks who had already experienced his grace. And they, like us, desperately needed his grace. So when those thoughts of your past come up, stop, go before the Father, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, your past does not have to control or define your future. I get it. It's tough. And finally, with the help of the Holy Spirit and your willingness to become all God has for you to be, right? Well, start being the person God has called you to be. That's the third point to be. Uh, start being the person that God has called you to be. I want everyone listening right now, wherever and whatever and whenever you're doing, you're watching this, I want you to know that God's grace doesn't give us license to continue to sin. 
Dr. Stephen Horn says that the story of Rahab serves as the greatest reminder of this truth. And when confronted with the truth about the one true God, Rahab announced, For your God is God in heaven, above and on earth below. And this seems to be the beginning of Rahab's faith journey, a faith journey that the writer of Hebrews 11 speaks of when he does the roll call of people of faith. Her name's mentioned. By faith, Rahab the prostitute. Hey, she couldn't even shake her past in the New Testament. Rahab the prostitute received the spies in peace and didn't perish with those who disobeyed. Again, the Apostle James does the same thing when explaining the connection of faith to works when he mentions Rahab as an example of one who displayed her faith through her works. And we've read and studied that in our Monday Night Bible Study in James chapter 2. So moms, women, what if you're here today and you don't quite feel like the Proverbs 31 woman? Be encouraged. God wants to use you. God can use you. And for some of you, I would say right now, he is using you. Maybe you'll be like Bathsheba to Solomon. Some say he was the wisest man who ever lived and God gave Solomon his wisdom. I'm not not challenging that, but I dare say that God used his mother, Mama Bathsheba, to impart some of the women, the the wisdom, and to teach some of the truths that he came to know. God used Bathsheba in spite of everything. And God can use you too. Is there hope? You bet there is. Now, this message of grace is not just for women. So men, you need to be listening. It's for all women, all men, and yes, children too. It's for every single one of us, every single one of us who think our situations are too desperate. For every single one of us who thinks that we'll never be able to outrun our past. And for every person who feels like they came from the wrong side of the tracks and the wrong family, for God to use them, this is not true. We have proof when we look to scripture and particularly today in Matthew 1. We have proof because there we see women who experienced grace because there is grace. They experience forgiveness because there is forgiveness. And there is healing in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So what do we do about it? What do we do? Sometimes we overcompensate for our past. We turn over a new leaf. We try new things. And we're doing well for a while, but then just kind of loses momentum, doesn't it? Well, this is where I encourage you and myself to stop and look to the wisdom of God. At some point, we need to recognize and admit that we can't do this on our own and in our own strength. We need to come to the end of ourselves and say, Lord Jesus, I can't do this anymore. It is only by the grace of Jesus Christ that we can be saved, forgiven, and have the promise of eternal life. Being drawn to God by the Holy Spirit, we need to acknowledge that Jesus died. He died for us. He died for me. He died for you. And because of that act, God can and will use me. And he can and will use you if you let him. I pray right now that whoever you are, a mom, a dad, a child, a truck driver, a student, a teacher, a waitress, a nurse, a homemaker, God can use you. John Wesley would have called the experience of God drawing himself or drawing you to himself as God's prevenient grace. And I pray just now that you might acknowledge that Jesus is the way. He's the truth. And he's the light. The scripture says to call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. These aren't just words spoken by us, but God knows our heart's intent. There is hope in the name of the Lord. 
If you're feeling that tug to commit or to recommit your life to God right now, know that he is there and waiting for you to respond. You could say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Give me grace that I may live a new and fresh life in your name. He knows. Why not offer your own prayer to him right now? You can receive a new and recommit your life to him and grasp this hope that only comes from our Savior. Now, if we were in our building right now, there would probably be some quiet music playing in the background. And I would encourage you to come to the front of our sanctuary and make a public declaration Stand from your seats and come to the front. Kneel at what in the Salvation Army we call the mercy seat or the holiness table. They're symbols where God can meet with you. Now, God can meet you wherever you are, whenever you are, however you are. But there's a special thing when we're gathered together in a church building, isn't there sometimes? But wherever you are, there's a mercy seat. Wherever you are, there is a holiness table and God wants to hear from you. But if you were in the building, I'd ask you to come forward. And then I'd ask other people to come and gather around you and pray for you and uplift you. And then when you get up and you look around and you see the body of Christ supporting you, you will feel so loved. But know right now where you are, there is the body of Christ who loves you and is supporting you in prayer and your commitment just now. But we're not in the building. I'm on this side of the camera and you're on that side of the camera. But the Holy Spirit is no respecter in this case right now. He transcends time and space and he is there with you now, drawing you to the Father because of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. How amazing would it be if you and me and our church body could say that today, Mother's Day 2021, or whatever day you're listening to this and you're recommitting your life, but this day, wherever you are amidst a world pandemic, loss of lives, loss of jobs, some people are in great despair and in health concerns, wouldn't it be amazing if we could say that God reached down and you reached out and took the master's hand and a fresh commitment to the your faith journey was made today, right now, where you are? That'd be amazing. I believe that for some of you. I stand before you today or sit <laughs> personally knowing the hope and grace that is given through the cross of Christ. I too come with a past that's hard to shake, but no longer condemn myself because God doesn't condemn me. I walk in freedom that can only be experienced through a new life in Christ. And I know that that can be your experience too. As you reflect on what was said today in the message, I call the women of hope, but really for everyone, I want you to remember Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, and I'm going to include my name in on that list today. I hope you remember me. They, we, serve as a reminder of God's grace and hope. And I pray that you discover these gifts anew today and fresh every day. And I pray that the beauty of Jesus be seen in you, be seen in me, and that we could go and share this love despite our fears and doubts. Because there is hope. He is our hope. Bless you today. Yes,
benediction today is from Romans chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude towards each other, similar to Christ Jesus' attitude. That way, you can glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ together with one voice. May God add a blessing to your day. Mothers, have an enjoyable day. You are in our prayers. And remember, the Lord goes with you and loves you. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. the 